Week five has come and gone. It was a blur. There was so much going on. But let's uh, take a look at what we got achieved. Oh my gosh, guys, I just watched through this video and going through the old stuff is just, I can't believe it. It was so wonderful. Even though it's two years old, seeing some moments with the kids and all the stuff that we managed to produce that last week of 2022 was so worth it. So I hope you enjoy this. We have one more video after this one with 2023 and then we're all into new 2024 Every Bit Counts content. So stay with me. And on the weekend, we'll have a new video for you. One thing that Chris touched on at the end of our last Every Bit Counts Challenge video is the repetitiveness of it. That's one thing we've really, really learned from this challenge is the importance of those small batches and the repetitiveness of redoing those small batches to get just how much you're going to need for your winter storage. Uh, that's something we have found with soups, with juice, things like that. I mean... Uh, we're aiming for having 52 jars of something so that we have one a week and you're doing it in small batches of six or seven at a time but boy does it add up when you lay it all out on the table and really take a look so we're going to kind of quickly go through just what we got done this week the final week of the every bit counts challenge is upon us we have four days left in august and boy oh boy we still have a lot to get done as you can see we are still drowning in tomatoes. So yes, that's kind of our main focal point, but we're also, wait for it, drowning in apples. The orchard is pumping out apples, so applesauce and who knows what else is also to come. So fingers crossed we can get a few good things in in the next four days, but stay tuned even after that because we're still going to be making a lot of stuff after this challenge. So we're starting week five with prep work to get some lemony basil soup made with rabbit meat. Uh, we actually have a video for this already on our channel with the recipe, which we'll link above right now. But first step is, of course, butchering the rabbits, which we did this weekend. So we've got the uh, deboned meat here from four of our Champagne d'Argent rabbits, and we're going to get this through the grinder. Obviously, not all of this for, is for the soup. We're going to actually package some in one pound containers to freeze which is also still part of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. But uh, the remainder we're going to get cooking in a pot for our soup. Well, since this is a triple batch, we have three pounds of rabbit, ground rabbit in here, and uh, browning that up before we uh, add the tomato um, juice to this mix and uh, all the spices and that sort of thing. So it's well on its way to cooking. And since we're going to be doing another triple batch uh, this week. We've put another three pounds aside and that's going to go in the fridge for the short term but then we uh, also have managed to get some to put in the freezer for later. And then we have six more pounds. Each one of these is we weighed it out. You can see from the scale. So six more pounds to go in the freezer so we ended up with basically 12 pounds from the uh, the four rabbits. Now keep in mind these were older rabbits but uh, that's not bad. 12 pounds of deboned meat, 6 to go in the freezer, and 6 to make our lemony basil soup. So our meat is nicely browned off and we've added our seasoning. Now this is a very, very simple recipe and I do hope that you will go and check out the video that we've linked above, uh, which kind of goes into a bit more detail on how to make this. But if you don't have rabbit meat, this works fantastic with chicken. I'm pretty sure you could even substitute beef if you wanted. Basically, it's a taco seasoning. Uh, I do a homemade taco seasoning so that you don't have to worry about whether it has flour or not because you shouldn't really can flour. Uh, so we've got the taco seasoning in there with our meat. We're adding our onions and we're working on carrots and celery. And then it's tomatoes in so we'll bring you back when it's all ready to go. So yesterday at about 11 o'clock we completed our uh, yellow tomato juice with that 47 pounds that we'd harvested. Then we managed to freeze 24 pounds for marinara this week. And now Chris is working on 30 pounds of Scotia tomatoes for our lemony basil soup. And what else did you do with the Scotia tomatoes? He separated a second batch of 30 pounds. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. So in total, realistically, between all of these, and we still have some left over. I'll show you here. And here's some more for this uh, lemon basil soup that we're getting washed and ready for uh, Chris to run through the food mill. But all in all, we ended up with 
About 130 pounds of tomatoes we harvested yesterday. What do you think of that, Christopher? It's pretty good. 130 pounds, and we've almost found uses for them all. And we've already harvested 75 pounds ahead of that. Yeah, and so we're over 200 day. pounds, and there's still a whack load out there. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep going. Well, we are getting there with the tomato portion of the soup. I've got a little bit more to add and a little bit more to go through. But before we get that far, I wanted to uh, just talk about something really briefly about using our, uh, our food mill. So one big thing about this food mill is we've essentially run the tomatoes through the first time. Now, the Scotia tomatoes, which we are using for, for the bulk of uh, this lemony basil soup because we really like the flavor, and because Scotia tomatoes are a Canadian heirloom tomato, which is also pretty cool, they're quite juicy. And you can see that even though I have run these tomatoes through once, there's a lot of juice and liquid left in this pulp. So, one thing we're going to do is run that through again. Now, one little kind of, I guess, tidbit of advice. Definitely we find that uh, when you run it through again, we kind of wait till the end of the batch because running it through, it will clog it up a lot more than sort of the first press or first uh, push of tomatoes through. So, definitely something to think about, but it is very, very much worth running that pulp through a second time because uh, you'll get quite a bit. So there's that little tip as we uh, continue making the soup. See if I can film this. But as you see, this is pulp running through for the second time. And you can see what's coming out here. A lot more liquid, a lot more good usable tomato pulp. And what comes out the other end is a lot drier than what went through the first time. You could even on a really juicy type of tomato maybe do this a third time. Uh, we're not going to with these Scotia tomatoes because we usually find a third time and you're uh, really pushing your luck on how much you get out of them. So there we have our first seven jars of our rabbit lemon basil soup in the pressure canner. We've got to can those uh, 90 minutes, 10 pounds of pressure. And it looks like we didn't even do anything. <laughs> so we still have at least uh, eight or nine jars in this bucket here for another round. So we're going to just leave that on the stove and uh, come back to jar that once our first round in the canner has finished. This is one of those key moments where I'm thinking it would be a good idea to have two pressure canners. And here's a super quick plug for seed saving because as long as you separate your varieties far enough apart from one another, when you're processing like mad, like we've been doing the last little bit, it makes it super easy to save seeds because all you have to do is pick the best looking uh, fruit as you're processing, dish out those, uh, or scrape out those seeds, get them fermenting, and uh, that's about as hard as it is, provided you've done your proper separation when you plant it. You can see these ones have been uh, up on the shelf for a bit now and uh, actually in the next couple days we'll be able to kind of float out the extra and take out the good seeds. So it is already canning day, day. canning day indeed. It's day two of the final week in the August Every Bit Counts Challenge and Alex is hard at work here, aren't you? Yep. That carrot was a little hard to cut. This is a full family affair. We are making some uh, more of the rabbit lemon basil soup today. We're putting a little twist in here with some cabbage and kale as well. But we're keeping these kids hard at work. It'll all um, count in the end because it changes is my favorite kind of soup. Mom and I have already made 14 jars of lemon basil soup. Yeah. But the amount I think we need is 52. You because think we need 52 jars of lemon basil soup? Yes, once every week because it's yummy, delicious, and the best part about it is you, every time you eat it, you know it's homemade because up here in Ontario, this beautiful soup, they don't sell it. They only sell mushroom, tomato, and So, So in other like words, that. what you're saying is this is one of your favorites. Yes. And you think you could eat it once a week? Yeah. Okay. Either in school lunches dinner or even just as like a little trip. 
<laughs> you do Delicious. like it. Now, yes. how, what do you like in your lemony basil soup? Noodles. Noodles added, huh? It's Don't good too because it bulks it out. Yes. Makes it go a little further so that we got leftovers for school the next day, right? Yes. All right. So what are you working on right now? The carrots for a minute. You're chopping and... the carrots. Well, round two is in the canner. We've got seven jars all finished up. Seven more in there, and we've got two that are just going into the fridge because it's not worth running the canner for just two. But we've moved on to the next project. Applesauce. That's right. Let me show you what we've got to work with so far. Apples in the sink. More apples being weighed on the table. Three more five-gallon buckets filled with apples. And I've got this Superstore tote filled with three layers of apples that are good for eating. So we're going to get this stored downstairs. Hopefully they'll keep for a little while at least. And as we start noticing them going soft, we'll just make them into something. But these were beautiful, beautiful little eating apples. They're not huge, but they're very, very tasty. And we managed to get them before the rains knocked them all off and they got eaten by wasps. So all in all for the Every Bit Counts challenge this week, tomatoes and now apples seem to be the thing. So we've allowed this to cook down for a little bit before we put it through our food mill. So we are perfectly ready for some good tasty applesauce. Uh, food mill is wonderful for this because it takes out seeds, skins, all that other stuff. Uh, one thing that we did do was we added some of our raspberries that we had thrown in the freezer from our um, harvest this year. And also some strawberries to this. The kids wanted to have a fruit applesauce for taking to school this year. So that's what we're going to deliver. So let's take this over to the food mill and get going. So you've seen this food mill for our tomatoes time and time again. But here we are this time making some delicious applesauce. Same basic principle, put the uh, mushed up fruit in the top, crank her down, and out comes a sauce. And then we're going to cook it down for a little bit to thicken it up, and then it'll get jarred up and water bath canned. Another great day on the homestead. I really wish this would capture the color better, but as always, we are filming at nighttime because that's how we operate. We're always working late into the night. But uh, this applesauce is a beautiful pinky, purpley kind of color because of the berries in there. So we've now reached the hardest part with applesauce canning is getting this to 212 degrees without getting burnt by it bubbling up because we like a nice thick applesauce. But so we are on August 31st, final day of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And my friend Ange and I are canning away today. It is full force. We are going to really be producing and making it count today. I'm going to show you a little bit about what we are working on. First off, we are making marinara. And uh, this is going to be super, super helpful come winter time for pastas and anything else that you really want to use it on. It's a great sauce. And uh, we're also working on something else that's a fun project that there's a video to come. Here we go. Now, you probably wouldn't think we'd be doing a tomato product on the barbecue, but we are. This is one of our favorite salsa recipes, and uh, I'm going to do a video on this separately to come, so watch out for that. And once it's finished, we'll put a link in this uh, video as well. But basically, it is called charred salsa. So everything that goes into this salsa, the jalapenos, garlic, onions, tomatoes, all gets charred on the charcoal grill, and it puts a fantastic flavor. It's such a simple recipe, so stay tuned for that in a future video. So here you can see everything else is uh, roasting away. We've got our jalapenos and onions. Everything is on there, and in the end, it comes out charred, looking like that. You want lots of nice blackened bits because that's what gives it the wonderful flavor. Look at that. That is some nice, thick... I wish you could smell it because, boy, it smells really, 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 really good. We did good. We did. This is awesome. And we're going to get at least 16 jars out of this. We're hoping for maybe 17 or 18 of the half pints. Well, this is becoming a full-on family affair as once again we tackle what, Alex? Tomatoes. Yes, we're making our yellow tomato juice. James is also working because Angela brought her food mill as well. Like I've said numerous times, 
Anybody who's a canner needs to have one of these. But we're pumping out hopefully a lot of jars of yellow tomato juice. Wow, when you get it all laid out there, boy, not only does it look pretty, but it looks impressive. This was a hard working week and it didn't stop on Wednesday, even though the month did. We kept going, but I'm going to show you what we got done between Sunday and Wednesday. So kind of starting over here, we've got marinara. We ended up with six jars of marinara, nine jars of charred salsa, 13 jars of mixed berry applesauce. That was the kids request. We had apples that we'd picked. Uh, from the orchard and then we had strawberries and raspberries that we added to it so that was fantastic uh, as you can already see this is a mega tomato based uh, thing because that's what is coming right now we ended up with 28 jars of our rabbit lemon basil soup now this is a favorite around the farm and uh, as you saw James said he really wants to have 52 jars of this so 28 well we're getting close to halfway actually I think we're over halfway my math is not what it should be. So again, we've got some of these here are the uh, rabbit lemon basil. Then we've got six jars of the red. Doesn't it look so pretty? Look at that yellow, orange, red. It was a great canning day with Angela and we got some yellow tomato juice done because we managed to harvest enough tomatoes to make a batch each. So we ended up with six jars. I ended up with six jars of the pure yellow tomato juice then we had one that was mixed of yellow and red which made a beautiful beautiful orange color and then we made a couple batches of the red juice so in total ended up with 16 more jars of juice which is fantastic for the storage again some of those will just be used for soup base and some of them will be drank as juice but all in all not too bad one thing that we did mention earlier in the video in the series of videos here is that we were going to try and fill our jars and to be honest we have not done super well on that the dehydrating has been a little bit lapse uh, we did do very 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 well on the yellow pear tomatoes and we actually have another half jar of these done and more to go in the dehydrator so not too bad but otherwise there's been very little change in these but trust me we are still early in our harvest season and we will keep going on these. So uh, definitely kind of follow along as we keep you updated, even though this challenge has come to an end at the end of August. So that is the end of the Every Bit Counts Challenge, but by no means does it stop there. Here in Zone 5B, which we actually just found out we're actually now Zone 6A, aren't we? Yes, that so, is the discovery. Yes, so we've actually gone up a whole half zone or however they do that. I don't really pay attention to it. We just know we've got a little bit longer growing season. So here we are just in the maximum production time for our gardens. I mean, we're about halfway through our tomatoes. As you saw in this challenge, we were pumping out tomato product like crazy. But we've still got a whole bunch more stuff to go. The apples are just starting and, well... Then you've got potatoes, root vegetables, and all that other good stuff. So stay tuned with us, even though the challenge has come to an end. Stay tuned, and we will keep you updated on how we do. We've got some definite, uh, what do you call it, wrap-up videos with uh, just how much we've managed to get canned with all these tomatoes we're harvesting. And we're not going to reveal just how many tomatoes we've harvested until the canning is done, because the rule this year is none in the freezer. Think we can do it? Anyways, we'll see you next time.